hi guys welcome back to my channel and welcome to a bible study with me video i've never done one live like this before and i'm excited about it because i my my hope is that you follow along with me but also do your do your own thing at the same time it's kind of like we're in like a little small group together except we're not communicating back and forth so this is probably going to be a longer video um because i'm taking you through everything that i am doing in my morning routine this is my morning routine and i'm walking you through it there'll be very minimal editing but i just encourage you before we start to get a bible get a journal get a pen get some highlighters or i am using um twistable crayons because crayons however you say it uh because i don't have highlighters right now i'm getting some for christmas but just get some bible study materials and i have two different versions of a bible that i will be looking at and then along with some other resources that I will tell you guys about as I go. Okay, the first thing that I want to start with before um, we get into this and the first thing that I start with is just a prayer to kind of focus my brain, focus my mind, and just kind of like drown out everything else, all the rest of the world. So um, I'm going to do that now. Hey God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the incredible, unfathomable opportunity to sit in the comfort of my home and talk to the one who created me, the one who is refining me daily, the one who keeps me, who is faithful to me, who is good to me. And God, I pray that as I open your word today, as I read in Philippians, I pray that you would illuminate the scriptures in my heart and in my mind and that it would have effect on me, that it would change my life, even if it's the most subtlest change. I pray that as I walk away from this time with you, that it wouldn't be just me spending these moments with you and then shutting the door on this room and leaving you in here. I pray that I would take you throughout my day and that you would use me, Lord, that this encounter that I'm going to have with you today because I'm expecting to encounter you, I'm expecting to hear from you because you do speak to me. Um, I'm expecting to change and for my character to, for your character to be, dis character to be displayed in me today. So, Lord, I pray that you would open the hearts and the minds and the ears of all of those listening. And whether or not they walk away from this video feeling like they got something out of it or not, I pray that it would just equip them with tools. Um, and any time in your presence, whether feelings are felt or not, is life-changing. So, thank you for this opportunity today, Lord. And I can't wait to hear from you. And I pray. Amen. I'm going to be going through the book of Philippians today, and I'm going to be using the soap method. So I'll explain that as we go, but let's get into it. The first thing that I want to do is read from this devotional called Unshakable by Christine Kane. I've gone through it for three years now, and it is for sure. So the scripture is, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out the workers into his harvest field. Luke 10, 2. There comes a point when our devotion turns to action, and that action doesn't have to be glamorous because Jesus is looking for co-laborers, not co-stars. Woo! That's confusing. <laughs> Jesus told the disciples that the workers were few in the harvest of souls, and they still are today. Let's determine to be a generation of co-laborers who are not afraid to get dirty, to work hard in unrecognized positions, and to touch the untouchables, to work from the freedom of the for the freedom freedom of the oppressed, and to get involved in the lives of those who are lost and hurting. We all like to tell a good story, but living one requires hard, fearless work in a slog in a slog through the mud of this hurting world with the power of Christ behind us. So let's put on our sweaty equity let's put on our so let's put on our sweat equity for jesus god hasn't called any of us to be heroes the only hero the world needs the only hero the world needs came a thousand years ago and his name is jesus christ instead god has called us to be workers he's created us to do good works not to live a life of comfort and ease ephesians 2 10 so let's ask him where our field is and let's get to work Lord Jesus, show me where you want me to co-labor with you. I commit to do the dirty work in our power and strength. Okay, I am starting out with my Give Me Jesus journal. 
Um, this is from Well Watered Women, and I'm obsessed with it. I love it so, so much. I haven't used it in a while, but we're gonna use it today because it's a really great way to structure your morning routine um, because of the way that it kind of lays everything out. So, so I just encourage you in your own journal to kind of maybe write the date, the time, and the place like I'm going to. So 11, 22, 20. Uh, I'm actually not sure what time it is. And um, the place is my studio. And then I will just read the scripture. You are the Lord, you alone. You have made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all of their hosts, the earth and all that is in it, the seas and all that is in them, and you preserve all of them. And the host of heavens, heaven worships you. That's Nehemiah 9.6. I really like that verse. So... Next, I'm going to just list some things that I'm grateful for. So I said, Azariah being so happy and healthy. And then I'm gonna say, Craig having time off work. And then I'm also gonna say that this week is Thanksgiving. Normally I do this with a pen, but I couldn't find a pen, so pencil it is. And then in this um, little box right here that says be still and know, I like to either write like an affirmation to myself or a scripture that I'm memorizing or just like even something that I wanna remember. So, I really like this right here that I wrote. It says he finishes what he starts. I don't know if you can. He finishes what he starts. Um, so, I'm going to write that in here because that is very relevant to my life today. You can just write... Um, Whatever, maybe you're struggling with a lie today. Maybe you rebuke the lie and you write a truth. Maybe you're believing the lie that no one loves you and you can write, God loves me because he died for me. Um, or just something like that. Or you don't even have to do that part. I just really like to do that part. This part is where I'm gonna write this scripture um, and any observations that I have. Um, in this journal, it also gives me um, prompts like what I learned about God and how this changed the way I live which I really like and then there's this big section for prayer so this basically sets up the soap method so I'm going to we're going to read Philippians 1 3 through uh, 18 I thank my God and all my remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine for you all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the day from the day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart, for you all are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all to have the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to, their all, and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim, proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, ambition, not sincerely, but thinking not sincerely, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. So 
so these little section or these little comments that I have out here to the side um, go along with each section that I just read. So he finished what he start what he starts goes along with um, Philippians 1 6 that says, I am sure of this that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. And then this says, confidence in our change can be the evidence someone needs to believe in Christ. So what I like to do when I'm studying the Bible is I read that once through and I will go through and read it again and highlight even more things that are not highlighted here that I want to focus on. Maybe something that I haven't focused on before and then I will pick a scripture that I really want to focus on and I will write it in my Give Me Jesus journal. Okay, so I, okay, so this verse really stood out to me today. It says, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served, has, has really served to advance the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. So I'm going to write that down in my Give Me Jesus journal here in the scripture section. Okay, so after I read that out, I'm actually going to switch Bible versions and I'm going to go over to my Tony Evans study Bible and I'm going to flip to the same part in Philippians. And what I love about the Tony Evans study Bible is that there's commentary at the bottom of the page and it helps give me a different perspective on the scripture. And Tony Evans is a theologian, and he always has really great things to say about the verses. So this is his commentary, his version, or his, um, yeah, just his commentary in the Bible at the bottom here. So I'm going to go and I'm going to find where he is talking about Philippians 1, 12. And I'm going to go a little bit above and a little bit below that verse in his commentary to see kind of what he says and connect some dots. His commentary in Philippians 1, 9 through 10 says, love must be more than sentimental emotion. It must conform with the truth of the word of God. And then his commentary for verse 12 through 14 says, the gospel is not hindered by struggle and persecution when they are tied to our faith and witness. Wow. I really, really like that. 
the gospel is not hindered by struggle and persecution when they are tied to faith and witness. And then just below that, verse 15 through 18 says, his commentary says, it takes a radical kind of God-centeredness to rejoice in insincere gospel proclamation, even when the preach preachers intend you harm, but as long as as Jesus was exalted and people were believing in him, Paul was content. Which is a very interesting um, perspective and something that I don't think a lot of us, um, the same type of belief that we take right now, if someone is preaching it out of like an insincere gospel proclamation when they're just doing it for their own integrity or their own pride or whatever to get their own approval of the world and not for the integrity and the sincerity of the gospel. But Paul was still content because people were believing in Jesus, which means that they were preaching about Jesus, not a false Jesus, not a false prophet. They were teaching about Jesus. Um, and I think that that's important to note there because he, Paul wouldn't have been content in them believing in a false Jesus. So. But this part from verses 12 through 14, the gospel is not hindered by struggle and persecution when they are tied to our faith and witness. So I'm going to go back up and read verse 12 through 14 in this version, which is the CSB version. So it says, now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually advanced the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone else that my imprisonment is because I am in Christ. Oh my gosh. I like that so much and to everyone else that my imprisonment is because I am in Christ. The version that I have over here, which is the ESV version, said that my imprisonment is for Christ, but this says that my imprisonment is because I am in Christ. Most of the brothers have gained confidence in the Lord from my imprisonment and dare even more to speak the word fearlessly. So the first thing that I'm gonna write down is that Paul is saying what has happened to him, which means his imprisonment, his persecution, everything that has been surrounded or that has been thrown at him, it has served to advance the gospel. So I love that his perspective, his perspective while in chains, is that God can, he can still use people or situations that the world, that the world would say is inusable, I don't know if that's a word, or impossible. So I like to look up definitions of words um, to help me also paint a deeper picture. So I'm looking up the definition of advanced and the definition is um, far on or ahead in development or progress. So I'm gonna write that definition down. question I'm going to ask is how how does being imprisoned spread the gospel so the first thing that I would say is that it can be used to spread the gospel because It doesn't matter what your circumstances are. There are people who 
haven't heard the gospel. I would also say that hard circumstances don't mean that God leaves you to figure it out on your own. So basically, Paul, so basically Paul believes that God would use his chains which is a very powerful thing to believe because when we think about chains, we don't think about freedom. We don't think about perseverance or peace. We think about imprisonment like he was in. We think about sorrow. We think about being frustrated and being lonely. And that was not at all the posture that Paul took up um, he had, Paul had confidence. So that's another question you could ask, like what type of characteristics was Paul expressing in this? So he had confidence, faithfulness, obedience, expectancy, and endurance. There's probably a lot more, but those are what I'm thinking of right now. But I also want to say that Paul had joy. Um, joy that consisted of internal stability despite external circumstances. I think that something else that we can know is that like Paul wrote Philippians inside of a prison cell. Like how many of us in the middle of our hard circumstances can say that we looked outside of our circumstance or deeper within ourselves to see Jesus and to be used so boldly and profoundly and humbly in the middle of our hard circumstances. I think that Paul had to have been so close to Jesus. Um, he had to have believed in him so much and walked with him so closely before he became imprisoned um, because that is how he was used. He didn't, he didn't, you know, live the life that he wanted to live and then get it get put into prison and then decide to give his life to Jesus. He had been following and being obedient to Jesus before this happened. And so basically Paul was put in a circumstance where he was like, this is not an opportunity for the enemy. This is an opportunity for joy. And this is an opportunity for the gospel to be spread. And the only way he had that mindset was by having a relationship with Jesus that went outside of his circumstances. His relationship with Jesus was not based on how good or bad his circumstances were. They were based on the sole goodness that he knew was Jesus. So this next... So this part says what I learned about God. So I'm gonna say, and you can feel free to write, like I want you to write what you learned or how this changed the way you live, what this, what you learned about God.
for what I learned about God, I said that God is able to use me the most when I'm holding on to the least. And if you look at Paul being in prison, he was stripped away from everything that he owned. He literally was just in a jail cell by himself with whatever he was given to write this, obviously. But this is all that he had. And still, the one thing that was on his mind was that the gospel could still reach people from here. And I just think that the less that we are holding on to, the more that God is able to place in our hands and work with and actually use. And then I said, setting our minds on him and our trials will change how we suffer and how we see the suffering. I said, opportunity over or before or is greater than opposition. What I think is important to mention too is that the object of Paul's faith was not being free from prison. Like he wasn't putting his faith in God, freeing him from prison. He was putting his faith in God who was able to free him from prison, but who was and is so good that he was just like, do with me whatever you can do with me and use me in whatever way that you can use me while I'm in this situation, while I'm in this predicament. And that's just a beautiful, beautiful mindset. So the other question is, how has this changed the way that I live? So for this one, how has this changed the way I live? I feel like it could I could write a million things in this little square. But I said, I want to see my valley seasons as opportunities for the gospel to be raised up. And what I mean by that is like, if you think about a mountain and a valley, a valley is low and so I'm brought to the lowest point of myself. I'm stripped away of everything like Paul was. In the gospel, I want to be raised higher than me. I want it to be what I shout from the valley. I think that it's okay to have human feelings and be frustrated and be sad and be confused or annoyed or whatever, but I think that more than that, instead of shouting, why is this happen to, happening to me, our shout should be, God, how can I be used here? Um, and I love that so much. So that's what I said after that. I said, in mountaintop season, sometimes it becomes me before the gospel. So I want every season I walk into, stumble into, or am placed into to be led with the question of how can I be used here? The last section is just a prayer. And what I like to do is go back to the verse that I was studying. And I want to just pray this verse back to God in my in my own way. So I'm gonna read it one more time. It says, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. So you can write this in your own way, however you would like.
I ran out of room a little bit right in here, but this is my prayer. I said, thank you for using Paul's character and dependence and trust in you to spark new ideas into my mind and create new fire about what it means to live a truly gospel-centered, spirit-led life. God, I want it to be known throughout the whole world in all my realms of influences to know that anything that happens to me can and will be used to advance the gospel. Fasten into my character joy so unshakable that even while in chains, I make your name known. And I just want to say what I love about this is if we go back and look at the devotional that we did earlier about co-laborers, um, it kind of goes along because like Paul was in a prison and that was, that for him was his field at the time. You know, that was where he was supposed to work. That was where he was supposed to do good works. And you can do good works even in the midst of hard, unimaginable, um, unpredictable circumstances. And um, I love that you, you can go back to this prayer where it says, I commit to do the dirty work in your power and strength. And we can only do the dirty work, we can only be imprisoned, be in chains, be in trials or hard things and still be trying to advance the gospel and allowing God to advance the gospel through us if we're operating in his power and strength. So I love that. When if you want to take it a step further, you can take sticky notes and write that verse or write something that you wrote in your journal, write it onto the sticky note in your Bible so that way whenever you open back up to Philippians, you can see that this is what you learned. So maybe you take what you learned about God and I say, God is able to use the most when I'm holding on to the least. I write that here and I write the date. So the next time I come, I can say, that is what the Lord spoke to me in this scripture. So I'm actually gonna do that right now. Okay, and then I'm gonna end my time in the Word with some worship. This is my Baby Day playlist. I talk about it all the time, but I think that just ending time, this is not all that worship is. Worship is not a sole definition of sitting and singing to God. Worship is so many things, but this is one way to worship and give thanks to God, is to listen to words that are lifting Him high. So I'm going to listen to one song, probably this song right here, Promises by Maverick City Music, Joe L. Barnes, and, oh, oh, and Naomi something. But if you guys want to listen to this, it's always linked in the playlist below. But thank you guys so much for watching this video, and if you like this style of me just basically doing like a live Bible study with you, please comment below and let me know. Let me know also something that maybe God taught you out of that scripture as well. And um, I know I didn't really explain the soap method that well, but if you guys want to see a video on exactly what the soap, me soap method is, I will leave a link right here that you can go watch and use outside of this video in your morning routine. It's helped me so tremendously and I use it every single time that I read the Bible. So. Thank you guys so much for watching and remember to love God, love yourself, and love people. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!